Today we do a deep dive on the amino acid tryptophan. Now, it was first isolated in 1901 by British biochemists Frederick Hopkins and Sidney Cole while hydrolyzing casein, a milk protein. It's an essential amino acid, meaning that we have to eat it. We cannot make it internally, so it has to come from our diet. And one of the biggest core problems today is the war on protein, predominantly the war on animal protein. And what it's done is it's driven a lot of people's diets down in tryptophan. It's a classic example are the cereals. Scientists right now are working on genetically modifying cereal grains so that they contain tryptophan because it's such a key amino acid and it's so poor in, in grain-based foods. So we need tryptophan. The best place to get it we'll talk about shortly, but animal meats definitely contain it. Now, why is it so important? It's the sole precursor for serotonin and melatonin. If you haven't heard of these, these are key neurochemicals that your body and brain use to regulate your circadian rhythm and other hormones and, and inflammatory pathways. It also can help to produce vitamin B3. It's one of the mechanisms internally by which our body can make vitamin B3. Um, although it's not a very efficient process, we can still use tryptophan to do it. But it's also the gateway to something called the kynurenine pathway, which helps regulate the immune system and inflammation. So it plays three major roles in these areas, and we cannot make it internally. We have to eat it in our diets. So let's look here at its key functions. So again, the precursor to serotonin and melatonin, about one to two percent of the tryptophan that you eat goes to this. Um, and of course, these are neurotransmitters, they regulate circadian uh, rhythm and then serotonin, large role in regulating how your bowels move. And so a lot of people develop irritable bowel syndrome, uh, whether it's diarrhea or constipation, and this can be one of the primary drivers. It helps to synthesize niacin, and about 3% of your total tryptophan consumption goes to this process. Now, niacin is vitamin B3, sometimes referred to as NAD or NADP. Um, so if you've heard a lot of the hype recently about NAD as an anti-aging supplement, it's just basically vitamin B3 rebranded. Um, but this vitamin is also responsible for cellular energy production inside of your mitochondria and inside of your cells and for something called redox, reduction oxidation reactions that help maintain uh, the balance within cells in the biochemistry. And then we have the kind urinine pathway, which is where 90 plus percent of tryptophan goes. And this pathway is super critical for regulating the immune function and for protecting your nervous system. And so there are a number of different diseases linked uh, to low tryptophan as a result of the deficiencies that can occur in this pathway. Now I want to show you a little bit of chemistry here. Um, bear with me. We'll start with um, just some general biochemistry because I want you to understand that when you're looking and thinking about supplementation with tryptophan or in just consuming more tryptophan in your diet, it plays a role in all these functions, but it doesn't play a solo role. Tryptophan needs cofactors, other vitamins and minerals in order to do what it needs to do. So for example, as you can see here, tryptophan, when we eat it, so this comes from your diet, your body will then take that tryptophan through multiple chemical reactions. And so that's what these arrows and these terms here to the left are delineating. But what I've done is I've tried to simplify the chemistry for you. In kind of a bluish color, I've put the nutrients involved in this. So for tryptophan to convert to 5-hydroxytryptophan requires BH4, um, which is basically derived from folate or vitamin B9. Now this process here, this chemical reaction also requires iron, which is what Fe is. It requires vitamin D and it requires vitamin C. 
So you see, it's not just about eating tryptophan. We also have to eat iron and vitamin D and vitamin C and folate. We've got to get those nutrients in as well. Then the second reaction requires vitamin B6, and that um, basically it's just one more chemical. Um, it's just one more chemical additive to get to serotonin. Once we get to serotonin, we can do all these really key functions. So let's blow this up quickly for you. These are, um, these are functions of serotonin, and you can see that we have what are called peripheral effects, and then we have what are called central effects. This is a central nervous system, if you will, your brain, right? And peripheral would be everywhere else. So you can see serotonin regulates, in the periphery it regulates vascular tone, the, the quality of your blood, the stasis of your blood, uh, platelets are largely dependent and interactive with serotonin. Cell, re cell regeneration, heart function, organ development, intestinal motility. So again, going back to what I was saying before, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, immunomodulation, and others. And then centrally speaking, it plays a role in depression, depression as in preventing it, um, sleep, aggression. It actually calms aggressive behavior. So we know that people that don't make adequate serotonin or have adequate serotonin in the brain can become too aggressive. Uh, food intake it regulates that. It regulates appetite. It regulates the mind. There's now studies they're doing on schizophrenics, which I'll show you, um, as well as anxiety. So tryptophan to serotonin having these very important peripheral and central functions. And the reason, going back to this diagram, the reason why we pulled this up in the first place was to show you that it's not just tryptophan working by itself, it requires these other nutrients. So B6, we got to serotonin, and then we convert serotonin into melatonin. So this is the end goal if we're trying to have good sleep and, and the functions of melatonin, and that requires vitamin B5. It requires folate and vitamin B12, um, and something called SAMI, s methionine. SAMI, in order to make it, our bodies need folate and B12 and the amino acid methionine. So all these cofactors, all these other nutrients are playing a kind of a dance, if you will, a symphony with tryptophan to get to these end chemical products that have so many very important functions internally. But we also, over here, we need zinc and magnesium for this enzyme right here, this N-acetyltransferase enzyme. Uh, and so zinc and magnesium, folate B12, SAMI B5, all to get from serotonin down to melatonin. And why is melatonin so important? Let's look at some of its functions. And this is this, this class, by the way, we could, we could talk all day about melatonin and its chemistry, but I just want to give you a summary. So here's tryptophan. We get to melatonin. So from tryptophan to melatonin, and what does melatonin do? Well, one of the things it's responsible for is it's one of the most powerful antioxidants in the body. So it reduces superoxide anions. It's basically it's an antioxidant function. It decreases lipid peroxidation or the oxidation of fat, which kind of falls in the same category. It inhibits bacterial overgrowth or gross. It's an antibacterial. It induces nitric oxide synthase and helps to express nitric oxide, which is a very potent chemical that dilates your blood vessels and ensures that your blood vessels can deliver oxygen and nutrients to your tissue. It has an anti-inflammatory effect. It also reduces chemicals like interleukin-6 and 8 and TNF-alpha. These things are um, predominantly excreted when there's a, a severity of damage or inflammation in the body. It, inhibit a, it inhibits a chemical called myeloperoxidase, which causes inflammatory damage. So you can see a lot of this is antioxidant or anti-inflammatory in nature. Diseases um, linked to poor melatonin, inflammation, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, high blood pressure, obesity, cancer, diabetes, sepsis, and autoimmune disease. So we need melatonin, but we can't make it if we don't have tryptophan. Tryptophan is the rate limiting ingredient necessary for the production of melatonin.